So for diabetes, it's not like overnight you're getting in trouble. That's the overall you should want to tell you. So a big or a very interesting, important concept, healthy and strong is different. I have a guy that's came in for diabetes, A1C 13, very sick, right? But he goes to the gym three hours a day, really muscle guy. You look at him, 30 something, not 40 yet, you can tell he was sick. So finally he quit to do my program because he believed, you don't ask me to go gym, I said, strong is not healthy. It's a completely different thing. But in the United States, people believe I'm strong, I'm healthy. Not the same thing. So when you say like, Dr. Wu, how can I be healthy? In other words, how I spend my health or how I can save for my health. Only four things. Diet, we're gonna talk about today. Sleep, stress, and exercise. There's only four components for your life. All these things you do well, you're healthy. You're still aging, but you're healthy. Have you guys saw somebody like 80, 90 years old still climbing the mountain or working the farms? They're healthy. They're old, but they're healthy. Why not? We're 30, 40, 50, then we have diabetes, we have all kinds of health issues. Why? Because in the four areas, there's something with you wrong. Unless it's genetic. But you're not type one, you're type two. Type two means a dog. You gain or you got it. So basically, your health going down, then you get diabetes. That's one thing, at least, we should understand. And diabetes is an outcome, not a disease. That's my opinion. In other words, your sleep, your stress, your diet, exercise, something wrong causes condition. You're like people poor. Did you go full-time job, work? Do you gambling? Do you use drugs? Did you get a good education, pay well? What's it really make you poor? Poor is not a disease or condition that can be fixed. It's an outcome. Diabetes is the same thing. That's the reason I'm going to have a seminar talk about it. All the things, components, for diabetes, if you don't fix it, then you pay me to fix for you. But every daily life, it's like money. You're spending for your health, but you're expecting a getting better. No doctor in the world can sell your health. I spend hundred thousand dollars, I can fix my diabetes. It's not, it's outcome. That's the whole statement. And do you guys know type two diabetes? Here, what I'm talking about. You have enough insulin in your body or at least 80% type 2 diabetes has enough insulin. But you have one thing called insulin resistance. It's like money, I have money in my bank, but I don't have money to pay my food. Something wrong in between. Does that make sense? That's the thing we try to explain here. If you know what's going on, then fix your lifestyle, fix the issue, then come back see. If there's something I'm not functioning, can Chinese medicine or acupuncture help me? That's the idea. So that's also the reason today we're going to talk about diet. Next one, we're going to talk about sleep. It will be November 6th. So hopefully, come join me again. You fix the diet, at least understand what to eat, what's wrong, what's right. The second thing, make your sleep better. The next one would be. So it doesn't matter, it's hard to fall asleep. You have sleep quality issue or not enough sleep, or you wake up in the midnight, whatever reason. But I highly recommend that you buy a Fitbit, not only for now, for future too. It gives you an answer for deep sleep. If your deep sleep with Fitbit is less than one and a half hour, you have to fix your sleep first before you fix your diabetes. That's one thing I figured out last two years. Basically, in the night, your blood goes to your belly, your brain shut down 70%, your heart and your lung breathing and heart rate goes down 40% less. Your limbs is not moving, right, when you sleep. Where extra blood goes? It goes to your belly for metabolism. No sleep, no metabolism. That's really why we didn't sleep well if you're tired. So sleep is another big, big part. You have to pay attention. 
So we're going to talk about it later. And next one we're going to talk about is stress would be December 4th. In my clinic, I found out for insulin resistance, the best treatment is tension release. Why? Basically, if the circulation is good like this, like my hand, but if you tie it up like a fist, what happened? Imagine this one happened 30 years for your body. I personally believe it's not your body not able to use the insulin, but your body's circulation starts. It's like a cash flow in trouble. I have money, but my cash flow in trouble, so my business is not running. So we're gonna discuss that one so you understand why and how in the future to keep it. So there's many types for stress or tension. Doesn't matter for stress, like you express your mental stress through your body tension. You guys notice, like when you have a project, your body's more tense, <coughs> your temperature is higher. Same thing. And it doesn't matter from your posture. We know from neck and lower back in the Bay Area, IT, that's your job. And also, by age, sports injury, whatever, become a chronic issue. My leg hurts, my back hurts. You touch the muscle, always is stiff. So your range of motion become limited. So all this kind of thing can be helped by tension release. So that one we're gonna discuss more. So we talk about diet, we talk about sleep, we talk about stress. Last one's exercise. Exercise at least have two kinds. One's tight, G type, slow, relaxed exercise. One's sports, ball games, running, jogging, hiking. The difference, the Chinese style like Tai Chi, try to help your circulation. But all the sports are partially helping your limbs, not a lot for internal organs. Very, very simple. If you do exercise afterward, is your sex drive and the digestion better. That's for internal. Very interesting, when you were young, you do exercise, your digestion and sex drive go up. You got stimulated internal organ your metabolism. When we get the older 40, 50, it doesn't. But Tai Chi will. So that one, if you want to learn, I recommend to have a class for diabetes, a specific design, that class, 10 weeks class online. You need to learn how you feel your body, how your body is working. It's called be friend with your body. So it's 10 classes. Whoever joined my program is free. If not, you need to pay $99 for 10 weeks. Each class, don't hurry. Watch one video, practice your own, say, oh, I got it. Then move on to the next one. I have a patient just practice one week for one month. And finally, say, doctor, I understand what you're talking about. The whole point is you have the reach neck and the link to your body. Whatever your body is happy, do it. Whatever happens, your body is not happy, don't do it. It's like a marriage. You have to spend time with your wife, dating. But when we grow up, most time we are taught outward. We we'll hardly date our body. How much time you spend only with your body every day? Does it make sense? If you don't spend time with your body, you don't know what's going on with your body. That's when a patient come in all the time for diabetes. What's your A1C? 11. How do you feel? Fine. You're eating, I'm okay. Bowel movement, okay. Sex drive, okay. Sleep, okay. Everything okay. But why you have diabetes and A1C is 11? It's not like overnight like that. So like people have a half million debt. How to start it? I don't know. That's scary. So I always tell my patient, don't worry about it. Whatever things you know, worry about the things you don't know. If you don't know, you cannot be in control. So the be friend with your body teach you how to relink with your body, understand your body. Your body is something you have to rely on the rest of your life. Most of us have been to Bay Area like 20, 30 years. You build up your career, make multi-million dollars, nice family, kids. But we have diabetes, what's going on? It's like a bomb. You don't know when we explode. The reason is what? Because you use your body to achieve whatever you have today, but you never take care of your body. Does it make sense? So be friendly with your body. I highly recommend you do it. So overall, when we look at it, so your health goes down, you've got diabetes. And for diabetes, at least four things, for health or for diabetes. 
four things you need to take care of. Diet, we'll talk about today. Sleep, stress. Here we're gonna do tension release for you. At least you know, you're getting better. But you still need to practice, try to relax more. And the last one, be exercise. Be friend with your body, will teach you what's the right thing, what's the wrong thing. One thing, when you have diabetes, your body is weak. Don't do heavy exercise. Try to bring down your sugar level. I had a patient walk 20,000 steps a day. I told him, Stone. He said, Why? I said, You're weak. It's like you don't have money. It's not like buy a big car, big house, making you rich. You should save energy. You drop to six to seven, 7,000 steps a day because the sugar dropped more. He asked me, Why? Why excess and more? I started burning sugar. I said, No. Wrong way. You need to make your body stronger, healthier, metabolism rate go higher, then do exercise according to what your body can handle. So that's the idea. Okay. In Chinese medicine, make it very simple for diabetes, for gout, for high cholesterol, all because your spleen or your cooking pot cannot cook rice, carbohydrate well. You cannot process sugar, so you get diabetes. When people cannot process, process protein, you'll get gout. We cannot process fat, you get a high cholesterol. We know all the nutrition is only three big kind, right? Provide energy. Other things are vitamins, fibers, minerals, but that one does not provide energy for you to use daily. It doesn't burn. So Chinese medicine believe your cooking pot has an issue going. That's the concept. So now we we'll come back. When people do weight loss, there's two kinds of things. One kind is your metabolic rate is good. I'm young and healthy, but I eat too much, I don't exercise, I gain weight. Very common, right? So I call it inside box. Why? Because you eat less, you exercise more, you burn the calories, your body weight goes down, right? But how about if your metabolic rate is going down? Does this work? So I have a diabetes patient come in, especially female, in their 40s, 50s complaint. I only <coughs> eat a salad. By the way, salad is the worst food for diabetes. And I exercise 27 steps a day, but my weight won't go down. Why? Because you didn't change your metabolic rate. That's the main thing. Just like a car. At least there's two parts. When the car has some trouble, Number one, the car engine's power is in trouble. Which means like your metabolic rate is going down. You have to fix metabolic rate for everything. So every single one here, if you did mock sign, you feel like my bowel mood is better, my energy is better, my sex drive is better, my sleep is better. You do have a metabolic issue. Your metabolic rate is low. Partially is your body exhausted. Another part is because aging. By age, your metabolic rate just naturally goes down. But the thing is, your metabolic rate can go up and down 40% in your life, your lifetime. Just like your income. If your paycheck cut 40% or raise up 40%, it'd definitely be different, right? Same thing for your metabolism. So if you have a metabolic rate issue, you have to fix metabolism. And second thing is, my metabolic rate is okay, but this car, the engine is okay, but my car was abused which means overloaded, over speed, over time. The car is okay, but the way I use the car is in trouble. That's what we're gonna talk about for diet. So in Chinese medicine, if you talk about metabolism rate, basically we understand it like a cooking pot. We cook rice, cook the meat, cook the fat. We our body process, that's metabolism. The cooking pot is two. One's the cooking pot, one's the cooking fire, right? Chinese medicine called a cooking fire called qi. And a cooking, the digestion itself, we call it a cooking pot. So the kidney means the sex or hormone. Basically, you know, when we're getting aging, the hormone goes down, metabolism rate goes down. A lot of things that the metabolism rate is controlled by hormone. That's really in the Asian time when they treat diabetes, Asian time only treat the last stage because they don't have the test mm -hmm. like today. You don't have symptoms, you're not diabetes. When we have symptoms, obviously last stage. 
sex is completely forbidden in the Asian time to treat diabetes because the cooking fire need to use for metabolism digestion, not for sex. So I tell my patient, if with our treatment, metabolism rate goes up, your sex drive getting better, great. We fix your hormone, we raise up something, but don't use all of them for have fun. You have to keep some for treating your metabolism. How to identify? See how frequently you have sex affect your sugar level. I did a patient half year, record everything, food, diet, sleep, sex. If you do that, you will tell. I'm not saying you should not have it. I'm saying adequate. Just like money. Don't spend money for fun, the kitchen first. Buy a house first. When this one's settled, go have fun. Same thing. Okay. Number one, let's talk about over time. What is overtime for digestion, for eating, for metabolism? Basically, eat all the time. 8 o'clock, get up, I start eating. 12 a.m., midnight, I need to take a snack. Nothing in, non-stop in between. In the ancient time, human beings eat around one to two meals. Today, average is seven to eight meals plus snacks. Snacks, like energy bar, is a meal. Anytime you eat, your digestion system starts function. So I tell people, if I give you two jobs, one job is like two hours, answer the phone. But you come to work three, two hours, six hours total. Maybe answer like 120 phone calls. Another one, 8 a.m. to midnight, nonstop phone calls. You don't know what time it comes in. Which job is easier for you? Every single one I ask is like, I'd rather do the two hours, three times. Just like a meal. You eat a three meals, simple, straightforward, or you eat a nonstop. You make your digestion system irritate. That's called overtime. Another one's big dinner. Big dinner is a huge overtime for digestion. You know why? After you eat, what happened? Do you go exercise? Do you do something? Most time not, right? You go sleep. That's the reason why when you have a big dinner, your sleep gets disturbed. Because you cannot calm down, your body is keep on function, digest the food. So big dinner is big, big, big trouble for diabetes. The same food, the same quantity. If you eat breakfast, no problem. Dinner might cause a huge issue for you. This is what the come in, 16, eight. How many of you have heard that before? 16 hours, no eating, eight hours, you can eat whatever. Basically, don't overtime eat, and your body process things better. Or some of my diabetes patients start doing one to two meals only a day, depending how you feel. I had one, did one meal a day for three months, lost 20 pounds, something. Energy is better, skin is better, everything. And the most thing he enjoyed, he told me, I eat only one meal, I'm done with meal today. No dinner, no, no whatever time meal related. It's a huge wasting for time and energy. The thing is most time we eat one meal is enough for us to survive. But what happened to the other two meals is entertainment, family time, social time. But your body has to spend energy to digest and discharge. Feel like furniture. When so far is good enough, if we have three, the other two have to move on, out of the way. Same thing, you did extra double labor for something you don't need. So this one is one thing. If you can do 16-8, I highly agree. Uh, encourage you to do it. If you, only can, if you would or like to do one to two meals, even better. So that's one thing, give less burden for your digestion system or your metabolism. And another big thing is if you don't sleep, you have no time for metabolism. So you have a sleep problem, why you need to fix first? No time for it. So over time and no time, both bad for your digestion or for your metabolism. Next thing we're gonna talk about overloaded. Overloaded for your metabolism or digestion system have several, number one is quantity, eat too much. Very interesting, my wife has very sensitive touching hands. If your stomach channel, I'm gonna see here, is bloated all the time. Most time people used to 
eat too much every meal. And very interesting, some people eat too fast. When you eat too fast, your stomach shape will show up and is stiff. When we eat too much, your stomach shape will show up and bloat it like a balloon. It's soft, not hard. But you touch it, it's soft. But if it's a stomach shape, you can see it very clear and it's stiff. People eat it too fast. It's a little different. But both will affect stomach channel. If you search Google online, it's stomach 36, a big point of health digestion. Always show up. And if you guys did tension release with me, you remember there I put a needle, huge jump, aching a lot, release the stomach channel. So that's one thing for overloaded. Another thing overloaded can be raw food. If you don't cook outside the body, you have to cook inside the body. Same select the same food, but the food character, texture is too hard for your body. That's overloaded too. Another one is temperature. Ice water or cold food like ice cream. We eat any kind of food, come to the body. What a temperature your body can absorb, for example, drink the water to your blood. Cannot be cold, frozen temperature, right? Your body has to heat it up. Again, if you're weak, you need to save energy for your overall health. Then why waste that energy for heat up that water? So in Asia and China, there's a culture, always drink hot tea, warm water. When you grow up, do you drink ice water or cold water? No, refrigerator is one reason. But culture-wise, you see all the grandpa, grandma, hot water or hot tea, right? That's the big thing. In the United States, 80% people in their senior has a stomach issue. I personally believe raw food like salad, cold ice drink, and barbecue. All three big things are bad for digestion. Uh, later on, if we get a chance, I'm going to talk about more detail for diet. Today, we're going to talk about the principle, the idea. So uh, last thing, very interesting, a lot of people don't know, is a fat after you eat. Uh, how many people drink coconut water? Sometimes. Or used to? Sometimes. But you know coconut water is cold after you drink it. Even you warm up, heat it up. So let's finish this part. When we talk about overloaded, it comes in the intermittent fasting. Why it helps a lot of people. When you overeat it or overload it, then people overweight, right? They cut down whatever eating. Intermittent fasting about it burning. So intermittent fasting for a lot of my diabetes patients does not work. If you don't belong to this group, overeating, overloaded, it's not the cause of it. But a lot of people gain weight and weight gain it's parallel to diabetes. You guys heard about that? So when you cut down diet, have intermittent fasting, it works. But if you did intermittent fasting and you feel weak and tired, don't do it. Your metabolism rate has some issues. It's not like overloaded. You're not eating. So if you have big belly or your diet habit is like, oh, most time you eat more or three meals plus you know, three, four snacks, intermittent fasting, I highly recommend. Here, explain why intermittent fasting works for some diabetes patients. Okay, for the effect after eating, even IU weather has the same concept. So Chinese medicine called cold food, warm food, hot food, or frozen food. IU weather has a similar idea. So if you guys are interested, go online, search IU weather, food effect after eating. Like IU weather believe melon is cold. What means cold or warm? It means come to your body, the food make your circulation speed it up or slow down. It's a cool sensation, clear heat, herbs or food. Or it's like speed up your circulation. Like cinnamon, they recommend for diabetes patient. But we know cinnamon is hot, right? Ginger is hot. Chili is hot. All, all the drugs are cold because of chemical. Your body cannot handle it. Junk food might be fire or greasy. The barbecue be part of it. Preservative, MSG is bad for your body. Anything chemical, not natural, your body can handle. Fruit smoothie is cold. So if you see some woman try to lose weight, drink a smoothie, veggie smoothie in the morning, it's cold. It slows down the circulation. Once it slows down everything, the metabolism rate goes down. Your body starts to pack. It's complete opposite of what you want to do. You want to lose weight, you want to raise up your metabolism rate again. So that's called after eating effect. Basically, the concept is 
either you cook outside your body, you have to cook inside your body. Raw food is no good. Cold food is no good because you have to cook or heat it up in your body. So it doesn't matter. Ice water, ice cream, salad, fruits, either it's cold or raw. Not good for your metabolism rate. So next time we eat some food, at least understand. It might give me trouble for my metabolism or my digestion. I have to take more effort for the same food. In the ancient time, Chinese medicine say one thing. Cold and raw for the stomach. And the cool, like veggie smoothie, the cool after eating a fat food, like coconut or veggie smoothie, damage your spleen. The spleen is the whole digestion system absorption. Stomach mostly is grinding the food. But absorption or the backstage function for the metabolism, we call spleen function. So no raw food, no cold stuff, no cool stuff after eating a fat, like coconut water, banana, no. Raw fruit, no. Fruit has another thing. I don't know if you guys understand. Fruit mostly are sweet, right? Why is it sweet? It's not sugar inside. It contains one thing called fructose. Fructose only can be digested, processed in your body through liver. It's the same as drinking alcohol. When you go out buy a bubble tea, anything if you put in fresh air, if it's cooler or cold, it tastes more sweety. Fruits like that, right? Is a fructose. So bubble tea, most time they add in is fructose. But as diabetes, you know your liver, which is the one chemical process or the sugar, whatever, in some trouble, right? Otherwise, you won't have diabetes. Now, why drink fructose to give your liver more burden? That's also the same answer for alcohol. You want to fix diabetes? Don't drink alcohol. Because alcohol will give your liver trouble. Common sense, right? But now you add another thing, not only alcohol. Fruit is the same thing. So any food when you're eating, Think about several things. Number one is cook or not cook. It's destructive or not. The more destructive, the easier for a digestion system. Second thing, temperature. Is it cold or warm? Number three, the character of the food. Is it speed up your circulation or cool down your circulation? Like a VG, raw or cold? Cooked, you put some ginger. That's the reason why when we cook, we always put ginger with VG, right? Because you want to warm up a little bit and break down the structure. So you understand all this kind of idea, now you know, okay. After eating, it helped my circulation. When I'm eating, it's not cold, it's destructed. That's the reason why human beings develop fire and our lifetime are getting longer. So basic idea, coconut, cold, veggie smooth, cold, watermelon, banana, cold, rice, Middle, neutral, ginger, warm, cinnamon, hot, mango, warm, and dampness. Anything sweet, Chinese medicine considers, like after you eat a few greasy in your hand, right? The juice is dampness, alluring, very hot. So if I have that idea, at least you understand that when I pick up a food or fruit, what I'm eating, what's the effect to my body? Okay, we'll talk about overtime, we'll talk about overload. Next thing is called overspeed. The first thing I find out for people with diabetes, 80% eating, well, basically in the Bay Area, most people eat too fast. My last record was per bite, eight times chewing. I said, you're not eating, you're swallowing. But guess what happened? You don't use the teeth to ground it. Your stomach has to ground the same food, right? Imagine your stomach to ground the same food or your teeth to ground it. Which one's easier for your body? Your teeth, right? And in Chinese culture, how many teeth you have? 28 to 32, right? If every single teeth get involved with one bite of food, you should choke around 30 times. The more you ground it with your teeth, the less effort with the stomach. That's really when you eat it too fast. The people average less than 20 chewing per bite. The stomach's in shape. You touch your stomach, you can feel it. It's there. And it's very stiff. Again, if you're overeating, the stomach is bloated, but it's soft. You can see all the bloom right here show up. But it does not show up huge shape, but it's very stiff. Eat too fast. That's one kind of overspeed. 
So if you don't eat with your teeth, the rest of the digestion system is in trouble because it passed on the job, right? Somebody else need to do it. So the physically thing overspeed, but another one's chemical wise overspeed. What does that mean? Today we cook, cook the four kinds of rice. We're gonna show you the picture and I'm gonna introduce you the brown rice. If you eat brown rice, it take around six hours to digest. Refined rice, white rice, two hours. What does that mean? The same ball of rice, the same job your boss gave you, you want to say like I'm six hours, get it done. Easy, right? Suddenly your boss come in and say, same job you used to do in six hours, now you need to finish in two hours. Are you gonna be stressful? That's what happened to your digestion system. Burn rice, six hours digest. Absorb the sugar to your blood. You tend to refine white rice, two hours. How about cookies, sugar, like Coke, 50 minutes, boom. If your boss comes and say like I'm a 50 minutes finishes the job, I guarantee 90% chance you quit the job. I don't want to do it. Basically, chemical wise is a huge flash. That's reason brown rice better. If you say how about whole grain bread, we ground it. It did the same job as our teeth, right? It make digestion much easier. So the absorber speed it up. This time it's not accurate, it's just an average. So basically you need to figure out, you know, why eat the same food? What's the outcome? Brown rice and the rice look the same. But when you eat to your body, it's different speed. So later on you should try out. How many people heard this one? Glycemic index. Same thing. Basically say this was over speed for your body, that was not over speed. So I use a simple word to describe what happened. So this one you can search online. There's tons of food. So when I talk to my patient about diet with diabetes, it's like, I don't want to fast, I want to eat, you know? No, no, no. It's not like that crazy. We don't ask you for any crazy diet program with my program. We raise up your metabolism. We want to eat a normal, but a normal means not over time, not overloaded, not over speed. Regardless if you have diabetes or not, that's something you should do, right? As long as you're with this range, you can keep a good outcome. There's many things. Glycemic index is low. So you can pick up all this food. So most of the time, what I do is ask my patient, pick up 10 food you eat all the time. Grain, meat, pork, egg, whatever. You'll find out 60 to 80% you still can keep. You can enjoy the food, like barbecue beef, if you want. And still not over speed for a chemical function of the digestion system or metabolism. That's the whole point. But also I hope you pay attention, what is the high GI? So let's give a summary. If you join my program, not over time, not overloaded, not over speed, so it's like a car. Overloaded have two kinds, actually three kinds. One is you need to cook it. Number two, temperature. Number three, after effect for the food. Next one is overspeed. Can be physically overspeed. I'm swallowing, I'm not chewing. Or chemical wise, the things come to my blood too fast. It's a big shock, exhausted my body, digestion system, or my metabolism. Okay, next question we're gonna talk about is milk. How many people drink milk? How many people eat cheese? Is that good for you or not? In China, you know, like Mongolian, in Mongolian, people drink milk all the time, right? Because they eat meat all the time. Meat is always heat, hot to your body. That's when you drink milk to balance it. So Chinese medicine believe milk or cheese or dairy products are cold and damped. It slows down the whole thing. There is a lot of alternative for milk. Because I know Indian, when you have morning tea, Milk is something you want. Try something different. See if your sugar level change. Any kind of diet, you will make a change. My recommendation is record two weeks what you are eating. Then try to change one thing only. Like I stopped milk for two weeks and it's different. Everybody's different. Your body might be able to digest milk than other people. And milk might be a huge problem for you. Test it out. Two weeks won't be dangerous. 
but you clearly can get an idea. This is good or not good. That's my recommendation. What is this number? Oh, that's the, the GI number, Glamix index number. So rice milk, I don't recommend because it's 86. It's like suddenly can get a blood sugar level high. So basically, after you eat the food, your body needs to ground it, doesn't matter if it tease your stomach, and your body needs absorb it, then discharge it, right? So that's the whole digestive system. And our absorption includes like your kidney, your liver, this is the chemical process. So all the food you eat can be overspeed from the beginning, can be overloaded for your stomach or digestive system, doesn't matter quantity or the, too much sugar, or can be overspeed. This is just like a car, it's only three ways to ruin it, right, over time overloaded or speed. Same thing for digestive system. So all the time I try to tell people, if you understand what's going on, try not to do it, that's it. So now we'll come back to diabetes or weight gain. Probably will ask me, doctor, what happened to my metabolism, my digestive system? Is food related or digestion related? What's going on? Chinese medicine number one called weak. The metabolism rate goes down. It's called weak type. So if anybody do my exercise, feel my energy is better, my sugar level drop right away. So that's the reason why we we'll offer one month try out program. If your sugar level doesn't drop, we'll give you a second month free. Once your metabolism rate goes up a little bit, you will see my sugar level drop. Doesn't matter how much. There are some degree the metabolism rate in your result. Second one called cold type. You've got cold hand, cold feet, cold belly. Your circulation slow down. After my treatment, your few bodies warm up. Energy is better. Bone wound is better. Some people, the second visit, start to see it. Some people take three to five visits to have more urination, bone movement, or gassing. We stir it up, your guts, so your metabolism speed it up. Next one called tension type. Basically, when you're stressed out, have you noticed your belly is always tight? So when we unlock the tension, relax it, your body can do a better job. We didn't help with your digestion, but your digestion get a better circulation. Another one called dampness. This one is specific for the people with weight gain. If you have a huge belly and diabetes, we call dampness. We believe it's trash or water -ish or fluid, whatever story in your body. We don't call it fat. But that one, intermittent fasting, is highly recommended to speed up your outcome. By the way, my patient, there's one loss 18 pounds in three months. No specific diet or exercise. Just no overspeed, no overloaded, no overtime. It's a very simple thing. Another one lost 24 pounds. Skip one meal every other day. I told the guy, 21 meals can skip three meals a week and can enjoy food. As long as not overspeed, overtime, overloaded. He said, okay. Lost around 24 pounds in three months. So most people fit to these four categories. If you come in, you do it, you will know. Interesting thing is most people in Bay Area is mixed. To some degree I'm stressed. You know, by aging, my metabolism rate goes down. My circulation has some trouble. Doesn't matter you wear slippers all the time. Or, you know, ice cream, air condition, all kind of cold attack. Chinese medicine believes that one. Slow down the circulation. Or the eating habits today. Parties, sweet, or beer, little overweight. So for the week where you're weak of metabolism, there are several reasons. Number one, spleen type. The digestive system just worn out, exhausted. Or the kidney type, which means too much mental work, too much sex, too much stress, whatever. The body is aging too fast. Hormone level is going down. And third one is stress out. You're not able to function the way, make everything look like a week where everything goes down. And one thing I want to talk about here because today's diet is the spleen type. If people gain weight and they have a metabolic issue, they have a loose stool, their stool is not in shape. By the way, if you do moxa here, you will find out your stool getting better, like banana shape, not a muddy, lousy. Why? Because your food has been processed better, complete. If your bone movement is not in shape, remember when you're a teenage or when you're a kid, you go to the bathroom one minute, come out like banana shape, it means the food has been processed well, well done. If not, it's a spleen type. It's typical Chinese talking. We call bian tang, muddy stew. And sometimes when it's cold or raining, or oh, I feel so heavy, I have no energy, we call dampness. Or have a cold belly, big belly and a cold belly. Or if you feel I'm heavy all the time, I just don't want to move. We believe it called spleen type. So what's the first thing you need to do if you want to have better metabolism or change your weak, weakness? Why you're weak? You need to rest, you need to sleep, right? Because Chinese medicine believe the kidney, the hormone, will be in trouble if you're exhausted. You didn't have enough sleep. That's very common in the Bay Area. 
I did a survey with over 300 people in 2011. 80% people in the survey, around 300, slept less than six hours. So I was telling the patient, don't argue about sleep, doesn't matter sleep quality, sleep time. Buy a Fitbit, test it out. Some people might need a six hour sleep is enough. Some people might need nine to 10 hours. But the whole point is, do you have one and a half hour deep sleep or more? Ideally, it's two hours. You have two hours, you're like a kid. Your recovery is the best. One and a half hour, you're aging, but it's slow. Less than one and a half hour, like one hour, or even less than one hour, you're aging too fast. You're not able to catch up every day, your recovery. You're spending the daytime in the night, you're not pay back enough. So you keep on going, the body is exhausted. How we raise up metabolism? We use moxa, you guys did already. Is it put a pot, put a moxa stick, burn it, then put it on your belly. Very simple, straightforward. I think I can tell you, energy is better, your is better, your digestion is better, you get more urination or gassing, whatever. That's the thing we do. So anybody in front of the video, if you never try it, the first month, you can try this one, see how much it helps you. If you raise up your metabolism, your diabetes should get better. We are the only program on the market target metabolism rate instead of a diet or exercise or all kinds of other things. We fix the car instead of unload the car. Ideally, you should do both. And also, we do naval acupuncture. Most people will hear the body start gargling after I do acupuncture, right? You can hear something make noise. Suddenly, we'll put a needle, start making noise. And that's the one from my master called Naval Acupuncture. It's follow aging, calculation for birthday, calculation for the energy flow. Everybody's navel, the belly button shape is different. According to that one, we do Naval Acupuncture. So this is the needle. Okay, finally, we'll come to the part. We talk about not overloaded, not over speed, not over time. Then the question is, what should I eat? What you should eat at least has two parts. Number one, called nutrition. Number two, calories. What's the difference? Nutrition is anything your body needs. Calories is anything your body needs to function, use. Like jogging, running, you need to burn energy. Every day, you have to get some calories to function. That's when the Chinese medicine don't agree with keto diet. Because you use sugar for calories, it's much easier for your body than protein or fat. Even all the three nutrition can provide it and burn for calories. And one thing very important here, when you eat as a diabetes patient, don't neglect nutrition. Because some people cut down their diet, eat so much less, I had one patient, too strict diet, and the nutrition is not enough. So that would be one thing you have to consider what nutrition you need first. I think I go online, search number one, what's the calories you need by age? Most people are around 2,000. Then based on that one, calculate how much carbohydrates you should eat or grains you should eat. You need to have an idea. Average people, one cup rice a day, depending if you go gym or exercise, jogging, run marathon or whatever. The more activity, the more calories you need. Then that's the grain you can eat, divide to one or two meals or three meals to provide a basic. Second things or the nutrition. So do a calculation for what you do and make sure you have enough calories. Then go follow, actually I personally don't agree with it, but at least they have a, some kind of recommendation for how many protein, how many vegetable, you know, seafood, beans, nuts, whatever you need to eat. So have a basic idea. A lot of times it's not daily, it's weekly. You don't have to eat nuts every day, but one week at least get some nuts for your health or whatever. So that would be the idea. So basically you need a protein, doesn't matter from BG, like nuts, avocado, or from meat, eggs. You know, a lot of my Indian patients are vegetarian. And if you are, uh, we have recommendation for VG diet for diabetes. Get some idea. Now vegetables, uh, one thing for the starch vegetables like potato, it's a lot of carbs. You have to consider that's something your body absorbs as sugar. You cannot consider it as vegetable. Like carrots is better. So you need to have an idea of what's going on. And oils, minerals, vitamins. So this one, we're not gonna talk about more. We just give you an idea. Okay, the uh, next one will be uh, some proteins if you're vegetarian, because for Indians, a lot of complete, pure vegetarian. If you don't eat egg at all, if you eat egg, egg will be the best resource, at least. But if you only eat uh, veggie proteins, here's some list. You need to eat plenty because your body needs protein. So get an idea, search it, and find out your diet what's best. 
But VG proteins, there's another issue. How many people eat the kiwa? Kiwa. Uh, yes. How about avocado? The reason is because there's a lot of protein, right? VG protein. But you guys know it also gives allergies, right? It might be hard for the body to digest. Human beings absorb animal protein much better than VG protein. At the same time, in Indian, you guys know, VG food is considered high food. Meat is considered as low food. Why? Not only religion, because in Chinese medicine, believe all the animal meat has toxin. VG does not have it. And also, that's also the same reason I personally tell my patient, I don't think keto is the best solution for diabetes. If India and China both have like over 3,000 history, say meat is low food, there's a reason. We believe the meat can create a dampness, toxin, whatever. But you need to keep good resource for protein, for sure. Then based on your personal condition or religion belief, you need to pick up something. But for VG protein, there's one thing, especially for beans, you have to cook well. How to cook it, up to you. But there's different way to cook it. And not only just boil it, very simple process won't help your body digest it. You need to do something. Okay, the final thing, what to eat. Number one, nutrition. We said it protein, fibers, fat. Again, 10, 20 years ago, American uh, Diabetes or Heart Association against fat. Today's not. You know, our brain 80% is fat. But you need to eat good food, good fat, organic fat. So when I was a kid, we always used like the pork, the fat we made ourselves, cooked vegetables. Very tasty, right? Even a uh, vegetarian has different story. But at least some or enough fat. Second thing is according to Chinese medicine, you have to eat all five elements or different character. What's the five elements? The heart is fire, the lung is metal, the liver is wood, the digestion is earth, the hormone, sex, whatever is kidney, is water. Different color represent different elements. And we all know different color means the frequency of the light is different. Their energy level is different. So in Chinese medicine, Ideally, one day, in one day, you should eat 25 kinds of food, variety. If not, at least one week. Just like vegetables, there's so many different colors, right? And I found out, even including ourselves, most time we go to market only buy, you know, three, five kinds of vegetables. On the table, most time, just a few similar vegetables all the time. The point is try to eat all the things different. The more variety, the better your body can absorb vitamins and minerals. The nutrition has two big parts. One is you eat very simple food, lack of nutrition. Another one is absorption. Absorption is related to metabolism. You need to do mox or do acupuncture to help you digest. But at least you need to provide enough. The variety will help you. The next thing is for diabetes specific. Remember we said the cooking part is the spleen. The kidney is the fire. Kidney belongs to black. So any black food like sesame, black beans, berries, a black color, right? Oh, this one is good for kidney. And any yellow color belongs to the spleen. So this two kinds I highly recommend you work. If you have a choice, black and yellow, that'll be something help your metabolism. True or not, nobody can answer. But that's a Chinese medicine tradition. Talk about color, food, with certain system. So we just put it here. We talk about what to eat. You know nutrition, you know calories. Whatever you need calories, don't eat more than that. And whatever you should need, at least you eat it so much. The next thing is what time to eat. Very interesting. In Chinese medicine, there's 12 channels. Every channel has two hours. So like liver channel is 1 o'clock to 3 a.m. If you wake up always between 1 to 3 a.m., your liver channel is in trouble, which means you're stressed out. That's when your sleep gets disturbed. That's also the time for your body to process all the chemical-related work for metabolism. We know liver is the one chemical factory for your digestion system, right? One o'clock to three, that's the time. That's the reason in China, in Canton province, very south part in China, you know, Shenzhen belongs to that province. You go on the street, 1 a.m., very busy, barbecue, hot pot, all kind of food. The people in that province, most are slim, not fat at all. Very, very common for fatty liver because their liver didn't get rest and that's not a time to eat. It's the time for processing food. And what time to eat? We get up around 7 to 9 a.m. stomach chair. Stomach chair is time for breakfast. If you do 16, 8, 16 hours not eating, 8 hours eating, I highly recommend you don't skip breakfast. Because when you get up, 
your body needs energy, doesn't matter protein or calories. If you need to eat a carbohydrate, like rice, breakfast is the best because you eat it, you use for the day. That's the logic behind it. Second is the small intestine channel is one to three p.m. lunchtime. Small intestine is the absorption channel. The next one is a seven to nine p.m. In Chinese medicine, we we'll call pericardium. It's the layer outside your heart. Is the body try to get all nutrition distributed to the body to fix things? That's not a good time to eat. That's also the reason why you should eat a small dinner. So you guys heard like eat like king in the morning, eat like princess for lunch, eat like beggar for dinner. Big breakfast, okay lunch, last dinner. Same idea. If you want to skip, I highly recommend you skip for dinner. No big dinner at all. If you eat the same quantity, three meals, breakfast or lunch big is good. Dinner always small. All these four is earth related channel. 12 channels, there's four channels related to earth. Earth is digestion or metabolism. But 1 to 3 a.m. is for processing food. 7 to 9 p.m. is distribution. But 7 to 9 a.m., 1 to 3 p.m. is the time for digestion. Basically, you have to get a time to eat, right? You eat it, you distribute, you process it, then ready for next meal. And also, before 7 a.m., actually, it's large intestine channels, 5 to 7. So every morning you get up around you know, before 7 a.m., you need to ready go poop. Your, your channels function very well. You get up, you don't go bathroom, you don't poop. Your metabolism didn't finish. You don't have to wake up, either go pee or go poop, right? Because in the night, if you sleep well, your metabolism get all the job done. What's next? Discharge the trash, the outcome, right? That's called healthy. Your body's supposed to be that way. So that's the time to eat. Okay, talk about something other than the food. How about drinks? First group, coffee, tea, alcohol. How many people drink coffee? How about tea? How about alcohol? Okay. All their three, what's the function? No, make you hyper, right? Make you alert, right? Does tea, coffee, alcohol provide nutrition? Hardly, right? No protein, no sugar, no fat in there. Now, why make you hyper? It makes like you are, have energetic, but where does energy come from? The self does not give you energy, give you protein, right? give you fat, give you sugar, or give you, you know, all the energy resource. You're using tea, coffee, or alcohol as an equity loan to withdraw from your body. The excitement from energy, other part of your body, but tea, coffee, and alcohol is the trigger. So every time you drink alcohol, tea, and coffee, make yourself hyper, you write an equity loan check from your body. So Chen Messon believe that dry you out or warn you out. Small piece, Keep on taking active loan from your house, from your body. That's the idea. So try to limit it. If you need to keep, use this one, coffee, tea, or alcohol to keep yourself hyper. Your metabolism rate definitely in trouble. You need a real money, real energy, real nutrition, rather than write an active loan check all the time to keep going for your daily life. That's the idea. How about diet coke? How many people think a diet coke is good for you? Why not? Not only chemical. Diet Coke gives you a sweet uh, taste and make you more craving after. The chemical is one part. Just like somebody believes that dec decaf coffee is not good because of chemical processing. That's one part of it. Another part is the Diet Coke. Most time people drink it, they would try to eat an energy bar because your body feels the sweet, want to eat a lot, but nothing comes in. That makes sense. How about bubble tea? It's weak and sweet and has a lot of fructose and all kind of junk things. You never saw some bubble tea made of fresh, fresh ingredients. You use one pot, put something, it's super good, tasty. Once a while, it's okay, but not something daily. I had one patient drink two cups of bubble tea every day. Three months later, gained 10 pounds. Nothing else changed. It's like so taste, so taste every day. So what time you should drink? Meal time? When you're eating? One recommendation. When you drink anything liquid, do not eat any dry food. Half hour apart before and after meal. Why? When you're eating, you keep on drink, your digestion fluid, which will be released from your gallbladder, liver, or stomach, will, because of the water or liquid you drink, get less density. You make your digestion less efficient. So if you want to lose weight, not only for diabetes. When you eat dry food, no liquid. Like dry noodles, not noodle soup. Dumpling, not dumpling soup. Not a meal with water. Not a barbecue, with a Coke, that's one thing. 
not good for weight loss. Four diabetes. How much you drink? How many people drink eight cups of water a day? Tell you it's complete wrong thing. They recommend eight cups a day, right? Chinese medicine doesn't believe it. Because everybody's kidney will reuse your water, depending on your kidney efficient. What time to drink? You need to find out if your urine is yellow. If urine is yellow, drink more. If urine is clear, don't drink more water. You might need four cups, six cups, seven cups, who knows? Depending on how much your kidney can reuse, recycle it. That makes sense? If your body is more efficient, you should drink less. Otherwise, your body becomes water retention. So Chinese medicine believes if your urine becomes yellowish, drink more water. That's the idea. So that's for drinks. Okay, last part, the fun part. The rice was cooked. Two of you guys brought the rice for me. And we'll cook it. We'll show you the outcome. And I got one from Costco, one from Whole Food. So basically, that's the rice. That's cooked 10 minutes. That's cooked 30 minutes. That's the rice come out. So we did all four. And I want to see the difference. And you have a simple idea in the future how you pick up your rice. So this to an Indian rice, the brand name. Uh, I will show you the, the picture for the, for the package. This one, the Costco brown rice, is the one we cook today. And I want to show you with this cooking pot of brown rice can be taste good. So some people complain like brown rice doesn't taste good. So that's why I don't like brown rice. It's not true. It depends white how you rice, cook it. White rice is good? The white no. Rice. I'm going to give you the answer. This is the brown rice we, we bought from Costco. Yeah. Very common. Organic brown rice. So we cook it, you see the, the clearish, and it have some little you know, foggy, not too bad. I want you to pay attention to this, the third picture for the foggy-ish, and I'll give you an answer after. The next one is Indian rice, and you can see the difference. It's the white rice you brought to me. Yeah, Costco. Also from Costco, right? Yes. Yeah, so but it's white rice, it's not brown rice. This one, right? Can you see this one's more foggy? Right. You almost cannot see the rice, it's like covered up. That one's little, but not too much. That's the white rice come out. Okay, next one. Uh, this one, the next one is come from the Indian supermarket. In the Bay Area, you can buy it. And uh, my wife told me it's very hard to clean it. Even the rice? Mm -hmm. Because uh, the small pieces or just you keep on need to wash it. Mostly the rice are like two, three times this one. Yes. And I can see the outcome after we cook it. Both the white rice and this one is more foggy. And I will tell you next why it's good or not good. Okay, the next one I'm going to show you is the whole food, the wild black rice. I'll give you an answer later. It's tasty. The food has two kinds. One is good to the taste. One is good for diabetes. Ideally, if something good for taste and good for diabetes, the best of best, right? So you have to pick it. Uh, there, there is, actually. Basically, you need to figure out. Can you see this one? It's very clear after 30 minutes. This one, even 10 minutes cooking, nothing show up. It's from Whole Food. Pretty expensive, right? Almost $12 per pound. There's a reason for it. So comparison-wise, I want to show you side by side the white rice and the Indian rice, the outcome. Can you see the white rice is pretty long, thin and long. Long grain actually is better most of the time. Can you see this one so foggy, this one so clear? The brown rice is okay. White rice is even better. Yeah, one more type of rice comes is called basmati, so that will be long grain. Uh, my point is the way you cook it, can you see it's clear or not? That's, that's the whole thing. The clarity. And for this one, the reason is because the starch, one called branch structure, one is called street chain structure. The street chain one, when you cook it, is more foggy. The branch is more clear. Because that considered eighty percent of starch, this one considered twenty percent. So make it simple. If you have any kind of rice, cook it as porridge. You know, one cup at eight cups water. Cook like 10, 20 minutes to see which one's more foggy. The less foggy one is better choice for you. So I show you four types. You can do the same thing, just experiencing. Brown rice and white rice. Is good. Brown rice as actually is much less. Basically, the more branch the structure, the slower your body absorbs. That's the idea. Okay, we're finished. What you eat, what you drink, not overload, not over speed, not over time. And if you're eating, it has no problem, then you need to raise up your metabolism. That's all the answer. So my program try to tell you is like, you know what's going on, the whole picture. If your digestion, metabolism has no issue, then is your sleep, which means like you have no time for your metabolism and digestion or stress. 
your circulation slow down. You cannot use the, utilize the insulin. Or maybe just exercise wrong, something. So all four components, you fix it. You should have a good outcome with me. You should have a long-term outcome. You can keep whatever you got from here. You messed it up. The body health is in trouble again. So for me, all the time I tell my clients, health is just a spending account. Unfortunately, when we're born, we're more rich. When we're getting older, our metabolism rate goes down. So like income's going down. It's always just a plus and a minus. You do this one good, it's a plus. You come in, spend time, pay so much, you get a plus. You can feel your health, energy, sleep, everything better, right? Or a minus. You have a project, three months, no sleep, stressful. You can tell your health goes down. You go to Hawaii, take vacation six months, I guarantee your sugar level will drop. I have an Indian patient told me here, you know, exercise crazy, eat a salad all the time, sugar level always high, 180, 200. Went back to Indian, party all the time, eat all the sweet, but sugar level is 120. He asked me why. I asked him like, what's the difference? Because I think probably stress level. But I don't feel stressed. I worked with that job like over 10 years. I said, even you don't feel stress, just like a car. It's within range of your loading capacity. But loading and without loading is still different, right? Imagine eight hours work plus party and a sweet. Which one your body likes more? Obviously, body likes party and a sweet than eight hours working. Even you, you know, sleep well, exercise well, eat a salad all the time. So that would be a different thing. What your body can handle. But at least you have an idea, you know, what are we talking about for diabetes, the treatment, the lifestyle, what needs to be changed, what's the thing wrong or right. So the final, final message is enjoy food and be healthy. How to do that? We told you already. Not over speed, not over loaded, not over time. Within that range, I guarantee the treatment should work for you. Every human being with the stimulation, the metabolic rate goes up, so the income goes up. You don't spend crazy money for drugs, drugs, gambling. You should become rich, right? It's logic. So that's the whole idea. So thanks for joining me today for diet. And if you have any question, feel free to contact me. If you have anything specific in the, uh, ingredients or food, give me the name, give me the ingredients, take a picture. I will do some re research, give you some answer. But at least you have some idea what's going on already. Okay, that's for today. But for the Zoom meeting, we'll finish here. And you guys welcome to contact us, our clinic, diabeteswellnesscare.com. And they have a first-time consultation free. Thank you. That's for today. Bye-bye.